Hi, the show is going to start in 30 seconds, I promise. Just here to say, SCTRT is free to everyone, no charge, ever. If it were up to me, there'd be no such thing as money. There are much better ways to organize the collective. But until that time, we still need to turn on the lights and run the equipment, you know. So, please contribute whatever amount you can to make this show possible. Just go to the website, charlesbursell.com, and click on the link. Thanks. Charles Purcell, and this is Stream of Consciousness Talk Radio Theater. I have a real love-hate relationship with the whole idea of amateurism. Amateur theater, uh, amateur, you know, whatever in the media now, if, you're, if you've got a blog or a podcast or all of that, I think it's great. If you're very much into politics and philosophy and psychology and religion, you have opinions and you read about it, you know, you're not an expert. You haven't written books. You don't have all the credentials. You're an amateur. And I encourage that. I think it's wonderful. That's the love part of the love-hate relationship. Here's the problem. Here's the hate part. Largely because of new media, social media, now we all get to hear about it and see it. But I'm talking to the people now who you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And that might be me. You know, if, if you could put a subtitle on this show, it could be, uh, I might be wrong. I, I know I think it before and after every, every statement I make. You can just assume that I'm thinking in my head, now I might be wrong about this. Amateurs used to be at home and just with their friends. Now they're online and we, and we see it all. And here's my problem. The lack of respect for experts and professionals, sometimes they deserve it, I'm not saying they don't, but this dismissal of experts and professionals and the uprising of amateur philosophers and amateur artists makes it so we can't tell the difference anymore. And it's degrading to the culture. It's dumbing us all down. I'm asking you to please stop. We'll get into more detail as the, as the half hour progresses, but amateurs versus experts. I am calling for a return to standards. Welcome, everybody. Gather around. Please, I ask you to keep your face masks on. We are in a hospital. I am really excited for the first AHSA meeting. That is Amateur Heart Surgeons of America meeting. Now, listen, you have all passed your online tests. So today we are going to hit our first heart surgery. So any questions before we proceed? Oh, what does this button do? Now, Amanda, as you learn from your online quiz, that button pushes the table down. Any other questions? I, I can't remember the three properties of the left ventricle. The three properties of the left ventricle are wet, dry, and young. Good question. Any more questions before we grab our scalps and go to town? Yeah, is this going to be anybody we know? Uh, well, that is a great question, Steve. My mother has actually volunteered. So, uh, mother, why don't you come on in? We're ready for you. Oh, hey, oh, hello, hello, son. Hello, mother. Everybody say hi to mother. Hi, Mrs. Hi, Pekinski. Mother. Oh, your friends are so charming. She's really... I can't believe they all volunteered to read to me today. <laughs> yes, we did volunteer to read to you. Wink, wink. Should to I my... whack her oh. with a mallet? No, no, Wait, Stacey. You Stacey. didn't tell her we're going to tear, tear her rib cage open? Oh, mother, mother, mother. Tear thinking my... about your rainbows. Mom, why don't you take Share a seat on this table? Um, okay, well. Well, it's part of the procedure, Mrs. Pekinski. Stacy, as we just talked, why don't you push procedure. that button and bring the table down? Okay, Mother, just relax and breathe. Think about Mitzi. Our I can't wait to get to the second half of A Little House on the Prairie oh. where we left off, son. Well, uh, I'm going to apply uh, local and distant anesthetic. Now. Look, local, distant, foreign, around the block, around the corner. I tell you what, right. it doesn't Ooh. matter to me. I'm hitting the button. All right, button down. Mother, are you comfortable? Well, yeah. I feel Can you wait, count wait, backwards wait, from 100? Things? Where are the birthdays? <laughs> Mrs. Pekinski, please. Backwards from 100. What makes Nine, me feel nauseous? Nine, 
Okay, grab Okay, and let us know when you're unconscious. All right, who wants to fit, take the first whack at her? Before she gets to 90. Okay, fine. I will. Five. <laughs> That's a pretty wimpy four. hit. Look at her. You never played baseball, did you, when you were a child? Nine. Let me try it. Why don't you take a whack at her? Ah, the old spit to clean the hands. Ted. Yeah. And well done, Ted. That has knocked her go. out. Um, well, I look forward to next week when we learn Nine. about... Oh, she's what? back up. What's Hit her, on? Ted. Hit her. Nine. She's got a perfect... Yeah, you don't want to do it yourself for uh, doing your taxes or doing your heart surgery. I was a high school theater director for about seven, eight years. And uh, it was a great experience. And I thought we did good work and I was proud of my students and they seemed to have a good time and they seemed to grow as people and as artists and nothing but great things to say about high school theater. But anybody who has experience with this knows about the parents who come in to the dressing room after the show or out into the cafe gymatorium to meet their their children you, and you know what's coming right that was better than broadway they honestly don't know the difference they're not just giving their children praise they are they really think this because they don't know the difference So you said in your profile that you're an actor. That's so cool. I haven't met a real actor living in New York City before. Well, welcome to the city, baby. If you, uh, look at that headshot there, huh? How about that cowboy hat? Oh, you look so much younger in this photo. Is it just the makeup that they use? Well, no, that photo was taken back in, uh, when I was in fourth grade. Oh, I was an I was an extra in Annie. Look, I don't mean to brag, but uh, I did really invent the character. You know what bothers me about Annie? It's all about Annie. It's all about Annie. But look, when you, oh, who built Annie? Who made her? Who filled out her environment? Um, I, Miss Hannigan, could you pass the sugar? I just. Oh, black coffee. Yeah, no problem. But before I pass it, let's think about why are we passing it? Who are we passing? Uh, excuse me. To whom are we passing it? Look, I could pass you the salt. I could hand you the salt. But what are my intentions? Do I want to get inside of you? Do I want to be outside of you? Well, Ryan, I don't think inside of me is on the table at this first date. Look, I'll take you inside on the table, under the table. Let's just figure it out. Let's figure out the flow of the conversation, of the Scene. Look, okay. shouldn't life be in black and white? Well, just, I just really wanted to get to know you, and uh, you said you were an actor in Annie. I did not realize it was in the fourth grade. What are your projects you're currently working on? Well, Tell some projects about- I'm currently working on is more of a photography session. It's called How to Know an Onion. It's a self portrait sort of series that I'm doing. To get to know me, you have to cut through the layers. So I'm photographing, that's the new verb that so I. So you're not an actor. So um, no, no, did you no, also no. graduate from Vassar? Because that was also in your profile. Well, I didn't graduate from a school per se, but I graduated okay. from life. Well, I graduated I from the birth canal. I emerged from the birth canal. So when you ask if I graduated, yes, I did graduate. And that part about looking for a partner to have children and a family with and a long-term commitment, where are you on that one? Look, I'm all about having kids. I've got three of them with four different oh, partners. right. Check, please. Check. Check, please. D- d- did I say something to offend you, Rachel? Well, it's just that everything you've said in your profile is basically a lie. A lie, exactly. Isn't that what acting is? Yes. Lying is telling the truth, but in a different way. So. I'm sorry, my friend just called. She needs heart surgery. I need to drive her right now. I just got this text from her, so I'm really sorry. We're just going to have to... <clears throat> Some other time. Well, that's fine. I'll give you a call and I'll emerge with you. Wonderful. Stream of Consciousness Talk Radio Theater. Love-hate relationship with amateurs. You know, if you're really into it, photography, art, theater, music, I got nothing but encouragement for you. Just try to uh, try to have some humility about it. Understand where you are. Nobody confuses After the high school football game, nobody goes and says, hey, that was a great game you played. You guys could beat the Green Bay Packers. 
They know that because they see the NFL every Sunday on their television. They know the difference. And that's my point. In the arts and in other fields, it's getting to the point where we don't know the difference anymore. We've lost our standards. And that's the call I'm making today. Speaking of calls, we have one. Hello? Yes, hi. Who's this? This this is Brett Denson. Brett Denson. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fine, thanks. Listen, I just wanted to call and let you know how humble I am. I'm just the most humble person you'd ever meet. All right, you sound like it. Yeah, listen, I've ha- I've been on hundreds, if not tens, of auditions, and I've gotten zero parts, but I have stayed humble, and humility is what it's about. Well, that'll do it. Uh, rejection in auditions, that'll, that'll create humility, right? Look, I have been trained to be rejected my whole life. Oh, you actually have training in being rejected? Yes, not... Uh, That's uh, interesting. ...per choice, per se. Um, but how, would that, I, how does that work exactly? Oh, well, uh, when I was born, my mother rejected me. And then my father rejected me, and then my dog rejected me. Oh, I thought you meant to, you went to an actual, like an institution, like a class in being rejected. You call that a smile? I call that garbage disposal. Oh, I was trying so hard to. Wait, try, how about this one? <laughs> that looks like constipation. Uh, well, it is a little. Mrs. Wallace, what about my smile? That's pure gumdrops and joy. Oh, yes. How come she gets gumdrops to dry? Okay, try How about this one? That looks like 80-year-old without your denture. Okay. I'm going to get a running start. Is that shock? Are you about to be run over by a caboose? Oh, man. Miss Wallace, are we going to move on to, like, uh, techniques in acting beyond smiling for the headshot? It's Sometimes. all about smiling. After that, it all just comes easily. The, f- the most important thing in the theater is the impression you make. Not your audition, but before the audition, when you mail them your headshot. Okay, but in defense of my classmate here, it's just that uh, there's a lot of people with creepy smiles. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, you're right. Hi, Miss do- Wallace. Thank you for meeting with me. My Look, pleasure. Look, my, my boy Daniel here is coming home and telling me oh, Dad. that you are criticizing his smiling. He needs oh. it. He'll be grateful to me one day, and you will too, because he'll be getting rolls left and right if he can just learn how Ms. to Wallace, smile. Miss Wallace, Wallace, let me just stop you right there. My boy Daniel no one stops has me. the, be- I the know. best... Miss exactly. Wallace? Miss Wallace? I have spent Ms. 10 Wallace? hours... Miss Wallace? Miss Wallace? Dan. I'm losing my mind here, Miss Wallace! Daniel, don't get upset. Daddy's That's exactly just a the bit smile I'm looking for. Miss Wallace! Look, my boy Daniel has the best goddamn smile on the whole block. No, but okay, you do. Okay, Miss Wallace! Well, let's, here, here it is. I'll try another one. Now, Miss Wallace, before you say anything, I will warn you. I have brought a pistol... I have brought a slingshot, and I have brought a grenade. Good, because we're doing method acting today. And we're all going to try and be a little afraid, because when you have an acting audition, you have to look nervous because you want them to choose you for the part because they feel bad for you. So we're all going to act nervous. So why don't you bring out that pistol? I'm afraid. I'm I'm afraid. I'm not going to take this class anymore. Okay, thank you. Bye. Miss Wallace. Now you look at my boy Daniel, and you tell me if that's not the best goddamn nervous face you've ever seen. Daniel, what? show her nervous. Oh, show her I'm nervous. Still some, oh, come on, Dad. Uh, mm, uh, that's very good, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, good, okay. good. Well, I get a lot good. of practice at home, as you can see. It, it, it's itching my head, Dad. That gun. That's why you can't smile. Now, Daniel, get in that car. We're going home. All right, all right. Miss Wallace. Yes. If I hear one more criticism out of that pinchy little mouth of yours, I am coming back with my pistol, my slingshot, and my grenade. You're kind of excitable, aren't you? It's actually you? my slingshot. Daniel, get in that car! I think Daniel's dad needs to be the actor in the family there. Lots of lots of emotion. And that's good. Lessons in rejection too. Less, good lessons in rejection. You have to, you have to go through that. And that's that's something that amateurs don't benefit from an awful lot. 
I also, I mentioned high school theater. A, a close cousin to that is community theater. And I, I worked in professional theater for many years, and I started in community theater. Again, it's a wonderful thing. And people choose it because, well, it's either community theater or the bowling league, right? It's, it's kind of the same way you approach it. Friends get together. Some, a very small percentage of the people involved are, are really into it, and they think that it might be a career. The rest of them are just having fun with their neighbors and friends. You, you never really learn to live with that rejection because we're all just having fun together at community theater. That's what it's all about. Hi, uh, it looks like we have a caller. Yep. Hey, this is uh, Ed. Hi, Ed. Hey, I'm just calling to say, look, I love the show, first of all. Thank um, you. Some really interesting ideas thrown around. Um, I don't know that we should be so critical of amateurs because aren't isn't being an amateur just a preface to being a professional? If we keep shooting people down and... Um, you know, holding it against them that they're not professionals yet. How can they blossom? How can they grow to become professional? Well, and, and that's why I said I have a love-hate relationship, because I totally agree with you. There should be a space. There should be educational theater, community theater, open mics. There should be a place for amateurs to go out and get that experience to move ahead. I myself went through all of those kinds of things. What my problem is, is that we have we get kind of delusional. The artists themselves think they're wonderful right off the bat because they can Photoshop a really cool poster and they can get on the local morning, you know, morning coffee show uh, on, on the local channel and promote their thing. And I've seen the Facebook posts from friends of mine in the arts and they talk to each other and they talk to us as though they're already there and they haven't gone through the process. So I say, yes, I love amateurs. Go do it in your basement and in the church basement with your friends. Two great points for sure. I'm just... Isn't the ultimate point of doing art happiness? So if if they're happy doing that, shouldn't they be shouldn't they be applauded for this? And also in inspiration. If I see other amateurs, you know, I'm trying to paint. If I see other people painting and maybe failing, but also experiencing some success, that inspires me to go do that. So you know, that, um, yeah, that's really good. That's a very good point. I see what you're saying. Just kind of wanted to call and add my two cents. Yeah, thanks. No, right. that's uh, thanks, Ed. Cool. That, love the show, man. Thanks. Thank you. That's a very good point. And again, I, it, it's hard to walk this line. I want to really, really support amateurs and their friends and their supporters and all of that. What I don't want, though, is for all of us together as a culture to lose sight of the fact that there's a difference. There, there's good work and there's bad work. I find that standards are being eliminated, and that's my problem. Uh, this is the Scrouse, Charles Purcell. And oh, hi. I didn't appreciate the, Shut up. I thought we were friends, man. <laughs> wow. I didn't appreciate the comment that you just made about go back and work in your basement. Hello, I worked in my basement. And then you went further and said, go and work in the church basement. Don't you know <laughs> my studio is in the church basement? I live in a church. We're, talk we're talking to the Scrouse, who's one of my great friends. I and thought a, you told me you liked the and show. A, and a very accomplished so what artist. Are you saying? You're saying I'm not even yet an amateur? I didn't even get a morning show because I'm I, I'm not so what does that mean? Yeah, that, was, un that was unintentional. So how's the... How's I'm, I'm a little upset. No, you know, that was unintentional, Scrouse. Uh, I wasn't thinking of you uh, at all. You do work. You you actually do work in a church basement. That's where your studio is. I, and, I, and I knew that, and, and I'm sorry. I, that was inadvertent. How's, uh, how's the show I, going? I guess I, a, I got a little too emotional. You have a show going right now. Yeah, the show's going great. I, yeah, I, that's good. I'm going to hang up now. All right. Thank you. That's the Scrouse, one of my, one of my guys. Now, he's, now he's an artist. He's, a, he's, he's trained, he's experienced, he's had rejection. I have nothing but respect for the Scrouse. I, I love him and his work. Thanks for having me on the show, uh, Margaret and uh, Anthony, The Morning Show. I have watched for so many years. And oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Talk a little bit about uh, my area of expertise. Yes, tell us a little bit about that elephant, would you? Yeah, so I bought an elephant, and I just have found that they really like to be pet. Um, so I'm just encouraging everybody to buy an elephant. And uh, oh, you brought him with us, with you. Just the call itself is pure art. It really is. And you know, I did some googling before I bought him. Before I became this elephant expert, I did some googling, and and people said you can't keep an elephant like inside of your yeah, basement. That's true. I would have thought I the found same thing. It's totally fine. How has it what? revolutionized your Whoa, craft hour? Go. Well, my scrapbooking nook has gotten a little smaller, but it's okay because I decided that really I was always just going to be an amateur scrapbooker, but I'm going to be an expert elephant owner. Uh, so you want to be an expert elephant. Oh, I am. Per, I am an per, expert oh, elephant. Oh, okay. Owner. I'm sorry. Forgive me. So how did you take the step from amateur scrapbooker to expert elephant owner? 
I bought an elephant. <laughs> That's all it takes. Yeah, really. It, it is. Seems and pretty I've, simple. I've had him for a month, so I feel like if you asked me like a week in what I thought about elephants, I'd be like, I'm just an amateur. But now that I've owned him for a month, I'm an expert, as evidenced by my presence on your morning show. Well, have you, you yes. measured ten thousand hours? Um like like she how has a good do you point. Do you have a log book? A yeah, I keep a log book. Okay, so what kind own. of things do you put in the log book of your expert ten thousand hours of elephant keeping? I say Herbert trumpeted. Herbert pooped. <laughs> See, I just made goes. a note. Herbert trumpeted again. Herbert did not eat his filet mignon. You feed him filet mignon. Well, he just eats what I eat because I, I just didn't think it was right. All right, boys, there she is. Get her. Sorry, Margaret Anthony. Love the show. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. uh, we finally tracked her down. What What are you talking the about? The elephant's been missing from the zoo for six weeks. <gasps> Shocking. Wow. Well, watch out for these dangling microphones as you blow that dart into Stay her posterior. Stay tuned to our 10 o'clock show and we'll cover the whole scandal. With oh. mashed potatoes. All right, lady, the gig's over. I can't do this to me. I'm an elephant expert. You are not an elephant expert. You are a psychopath with access to a zoo. You're coming with me. Stream of Consciousness Talk Radio Theater. I'm Charles Purcell. We're talking about standards today. At least that's what... I'm trying to convince you that we return to standards and that we separate the amateur and professional world, at least so we know the difference. I mean, while we encourage amateurs, we want to really respect and know the difference. It looks like we have another caller. Uh, hi, you're on the air. Hi. Hello. My name is Kiki Smith. Uh, Kiki? Kiki Smith. All right. You, wait, haven't you heard of me? Oh, I'm sorry. Should I have heard of you? I guess I have to confess, no, I have not heard of you. Kiki Smith. Didn't you hear about that artist who uses, like, hair and blood and puts them in vials? Uh, I think there was an article in the Free Weekly. Yes. About you. That rings a yeah. bell. Okay. Well, as you clearly are in the dark about, I am an extremely successful visual artist. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm in a lot of museums, including MoMA. MoMA, which stands for? The Museum of Modern, of modern Art. Okay. Art. All right. And I'm irate because oh. I have an installation in there, a permanent installation. And permanent. And you know what they juxtaposed next to my piece? What? My raison d'etre? They put an Instagram installation by amateur cell phone photographers. Ah, see, well. And they're calling that but, art worthy of sitting next to mine. But MoMA decided, they made that decision. They're the so-called gatekeepers. I know, and it's distressing. What does it even mean to be a professional, a rock star, an art star anymore? Well, I you, don't know. You don't believe in outsider art? You don't believe in untrained artists that, that they can accomplish in great things? I believe outside artists. Okay. Henry Darger. Henry Darger. Mary Knoll. Mary Knoll. And I, I forgot, the, the guy up north with the ceramic donkeys. All right, we'll look that one up. Oh my god, Kiki Smith. Kiki Smith, I was hoping that you would be at the gallery opening. Hi, I'm so honored to meet you. Hello, darling. My name is Shanice. I am the one who's next to your installation. Um, these are Instagram photos from my first year at college, and it is so amazing that we are in the same building. I am in the same installation as Kiki Mother Ethan Smith. Well, darling, it takes a lot, doesn't it? It took, yeah, I just submitted my photos and I said, you know, this is the artwork through the eyes of a millennial and they were like, we love it and it, it, it just sold. I wasn't even planning on doing it and I just had all of these photos that had a similar theme, um, struggling, and so then I submitted them. Hashtag okay, struggling. everybody, gather around, gather around. Um, this is the first tour of the season. Um, now, I just want to point out and put some emphasis on our latest installation. We've got a Snapchat and Instagram artist with us, and the artist herself is here today. So we just want to have her speak a little bit about what inspires her, and um, let's just hear from her. 
Oh my God, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I just, I didn't even think that this would happen. I'm only through my first year of college and uh, I, I, you know, on a whim one night after drinking a whole bunch of like margaritas. Um, excuse me, uh, ma'am. <laughs> we have a real artist speaking here, so if you wouldn't mind just listening. Well, for I, I want to challenge that idea of real artist. I mean, I've been doing Flickr art for almost a decade now, and all of a sudden somebody comes in, steals my chops. Oh my and god! Just because she... <gasps> I never thought I would meet someone who still uses Flickr. That's adorable. You're like my dad. Oh my god! I so as I was saying, I use forges and. And ceramics. And uh, excuse me, ma'am. You're saying words that nobody, it, it, they don't even exist. So we have true artists here speaking. So if you could just give us a second. So I took a whole bunch of pictures of all my friends right after they went I'm on sale. I'm going fail. to take this vial of blood. Oh and God. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to drink half the bottle. And then I'm going to dump and spit all the rest of the blood on all of you. Oh. oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to live okay, tweet well, this. I'm going to totally find this. I'm this recording. is going to be great. This, I'm recording. This, okay, I'm going to go take a lunch. This I've had it with art. This is real art. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Boy, you know, as we explore this issue, it gets more and more complicated. I enter into every half hour of this podcast with certain ideas that kind of change along the way i'm i can be flexible i i open by saying i have a love hate relationship the the love is strong new art outsider art untrained artists amateurs plying their craft that's where you want to put your attention into the art don't put it into the cool photoshop poster don't put it into the promotion of yourself no more self-delusion about what you are just really do it you have a passion you have some talent you have some training experience you have some, some experience with rejection, then go for it. And then in the end, all of us together as a culture, we can appreciate what's worthy and what's not. I am an unemployed 36 year old undefined person on a computer in a basement, a computer hewn in 1994, messing with the paint program because it still works. I am the guy who doesn't use a computer at all. Computers are for amateurs. They make everything way too easy. I am a man who sits in silence with circles of stone strewn about the room. I'm a man who needs no affection, no money, no love, for my art is my art and my stones are my stones. I'm a woman who paints pictures with my poop. It's Stream of Consciousness Talk Radio Theater. The SCTRT players, Krista Jarzinski, Anja Naranja Seeger, The Scrouse, and Jonathan Wachala. Music by Peter Donalds. I hope you'll recommend the show to your friends. Tell them they can use their favorite app, including Apple Podcasts and all the rest. Just tell them to search Charles Bursell Presents in whatever platform they're using it'll pop right up or even easier go to our website where you'll find all the links and you can listen to every show since the beginning of time that's charlesbursell.com and of course you can follow stream of consciousness talk radio theater and myself on facebook on twitter you know how all that works you're smart you're savvy all right thanks for listening i'm charles Bursell.
Hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please consider becoming a listener member. You get nothing for it, no bonus material, no tote bag, no coffee mug, just the satisfaction of helping to keep a good thing going, especially for those listeners who maybe can't afford to contribute. Underwriters are also welcome. That is, if you're cool, you know, you don't pollute or screw anybody. Go to the website, charlespurcell.com, and click on the appropriate link. Thanks.